Hi, in today's video, we'll install and play around with Carpenter. So what is Carpenter? If you're watching this video, you probably have an idea what Carpenter is. Carpenter is an open source cluster autoscaler on steroids. It offers more effective and granular scaling capabilities that's based on the workload requirement. So in a case where you have a memory intensive workload, Carpenter is smart enough to auto scale with the correct EC2 instance. Carpenter will spin up a memory optimized EC2 instance. Same goes with if it's a CPU intensive workload, then Carpenter will spin up a compute optimized EC2 instance. For this setup, we'll follow exactly what's on the Carpenter documentation. We'll be checking the utilities required for this exercise. There's four of them. We'll set environment variables. We'll be creating EKS cluster using EKS CTL. And then we're gonna be installing Carpenter using Helm. Then we're gonna create a node pool for Carpenter to use using kubectl. And then we're gonna be demoing the scale up and then scale down using inflate. And then at the end, we're gonna be deleting everything. All right. Let's get started. All right, so we've got AWS console in one tab and then the Carpenter installation documentation in the other. And let's get started. So first is we need to check these four utilities if they're installed in your terminal. AWS CLI, this is used for your terminal to communicate with your AWS account. Kubectl, this is used for your terminal again to communicate with your Kubernetes cluster. And then EKS CTL, this is used to create the EKS cluster in AWS. And then for Helm, Helm is just a package manager. It's an easier way to install applications. And in this exercise, we'll be installing Carpenter using Helm. Okay, let's check the terminal if we have all four. To check for the AWS CLI, you can do AWS hyphen hyphen V. It should show the AWS CLI version. Next is kubectl. You can easily put in kubectl hyphen h. And if it doesn't produce an error message, then that means you have kubectl installed. For the version, you just put kubectl version. And for me, I'm using version 1.30.2. And clear this up. Then for EKS CTL, you can do EKS CTL version. It should show the current version installed. I have 0 0.189.0. Finally, let's check for Helm with Helm version. And I am using version 3.15.3. So we've got all four installed and we're good to go. Let's go to step two. We're gonna set the environment variables. I'm just gonna copy this one, paste it here. So what this is, it just exports the namespace where Carpenter will be installed. It's going to be installed in the cube system. The version of the Carpenter application 1.0.1 and then the K8 version or the Kubernetes version that's going to be running in the EKS will be 1.30. Okay, let's proceed in setting up the environment variables. For this one, I encountered an error when I hit copy and paste. So I'm going to do uh, one line at a time. So let's do that. Let's do this. For the default region, I'm just gonna update this to AP Southeast 2, which is in Sydney, the region closest to me since I'm based in Australia. Let's do this one. All right, let's do export. Next, let's get the AMI IDs for the different types of AMIs. Paste that. And that. Awesome. Let's, I'm just going to clear this up. To do a quick check, let's echo the environment variables. Paste in here. Okay, that looks good. Next, let's create the EKS cluster using EKS CTL. Okay, let's check what this does. So this will download a CloudFormation template. And then this one creates the EKS cluster with this configuration. You get the cluster name, the region, the version. And then it's tagging the resources for the EKS cluster. Next, this is the IAM component of the EKS cluster. OIDC is true. And then we've got pod identity associations. We've got identity mappings. 
and then it's going to create the node groups with M5 large as the default and it's going to spin up one as minimum maximum 10 and the desired is two so we'll be having two instances of m5 large for our default and then you can spot it in the agent as an add-on okay let's copy this out and paste it here let's, let me clear this up and then just paste it here okay i think this might take some time to create let's go and check uh, the console and let's go to cloud formation and see if it started the build I'm in Sydney AP Southeast 2 yes that's the one carpenter okay okay that's good so it's it's creating uh, this will take some time so I'm gonna fast forward okay the cloud formation is complete let's go back to the terminal and EKS is doing its thing now where it's creating the EKS cluster let's look at the console and go to EKS and see if the cluster is indeed being created. Yeah, there you go. That's the EKS cluster version 1.30. And yeah, it started a few seconds ago. Go inside. Uh, this will take probably five to 10 minutes. So I'm gonna fast forward it again. Okay, so it took 10 minutes to create the EKS. Let me just refresh this one. So it took 10 minutes to create the EKS cluster. The only thing we're waiting for is for the node groups to be created. Let's go and check the EC2. Let's go EC2, let's check the instances. There are no nodes available yet, so we'll just keep waiting. Okay, that's done. So it took roughly 10 to 15 minutes. And let's go to the AWS console to see what we have. Okay, in clusters, we've got the Carpenter demo. Let's go to the EC2 instances. We've got two instances of M5 large. It looks good to me. Let's continue on with the steps. Let's go to step four and let's install Carpenter. Okay, so for this step, we're gonna be using Helm. I'm just gonna copy this and I am gonna paste it here. Okay, that was quick. Let's see if it got installed by using kubectl get pods. Oh, it's, it's installed, I think, in the cube system. And there's this, yep, Carpenter is here. All right, that's good. So we've got Carpenter installed. Let's go back to the steps. Uh, step five, we're gonna create a node pool. Okay, so we're gonna be using kubectl to install this node pool. I'm just gonna copy this out. And clear this terminal and paste it here. So we've got two resources created, node pool, and an EC2 node class. Let me just clear this up. Let's go and check the node pool. Kubectl get node pool in kubesystem. Awesome. Let's do a describe on that node pool, what it looks like. Default in the cube system. Perfect. Okay, it's up and let's go and check the EC2 node class. It's in the cube system namespace again. And there you go. That's it. Cube Cutto. Let's describe that EC2 node class. Default in the cube system. Perfect. I think we're good to go for the demo. Next is we're going to scale up deployment using inflate. So that means this should expand as well. So currently we've got two nodes. Let's see how we go. So I'm just gonna copy this one. I'm just gonna clear this up and I'm gonna paste it here. Okay. Oh wow. Okay, let's see what it does to the instances. Okay, so it's spinning up new instances. You see this one, it's a C5 2x large. Wow. Okay. If you notice that the C5 A2X large is different from the M5 that large that we have as default. That's the beauty of Carpenter is that it spins up an instance based on the workload requirement. Let's go back to the terminal. It's still going and it's currently initializing. So might take some time for this. 
Okay, let's hit refresh and it's available and three out of three checks passed. That's awesome. Now we, we see that it scaled up the number of nodes that we have and it used a different EC2 instance type from the default M5.large. Wow, it's great. Next, let's do a scale down. I'm just gonna control C in here and let's go back to the documentation and I'm just gonna do it one at a time. But first, let's see that inflate pod. Cube got will get pods. So we've got five inflate pods. Okay, great. Okay, next, let's proceed with the scale down. We're gonna be deleting that deployment. Check that again. So no pods anymore. And then let's do the logs for the controller. Let's go back to the terminal. Let's go to EC2. The C5A 2x large is still running. Let's wait for a while. Let's do a refresh. Okay, so it's shutting down this instance because we don't need it anymore. Let's check the terminal again. Yes, so it's deleting that node. And let's go and refresh. So it's terminated. And yep, it deleted node client. Awesome. Let's proceed with the last step. And let's go and delete everything. Let's do it one at a time, starting with the Helm uninstall Carpenter. So I just paste it there. So Carpenter is uninstalled. Let's just do a double check. You've got to get pods and it's in the cube system. Yep, no Carpenter anymore. And then let's delete the CloudFormation stack. Let's go back to the console and let's go to CloudFormation. Let's see if the stack is being deleted. Yep, delete is in progress. Okay, let's proceed with the deletion. And let's go and grab this and paste it here. Okay, got an error. Uh, it seems I don't have this JQ, so I'm just gonna install it using brew install. Okay, that's done. JQ should be installed now. Let's try that command again. All right, cool. No errors this time. And then I'm going to be deleting the EKS cluster using EKS TL. Okay, so it says here that the node group has been deleted. Let's go and check that out. Go to instances, let's go and refresh this one. Okay, they're all terminated now, that's good. And let's go back to the cluster and see it's active. I'm just gonna do a quick refresh again. And it seems like it's already deleting. Okay, it's in a deleting status, so that's good. Let's go back to the terminal. All cluster resources were deleted. Let's go and check the cloud formation. And let's go to stacks. Okay, I've got one delete fail stack in here. So I'm just gonna go here and I'm gonna go and do a retry delete. It might be some intermittent stuff. Okay, delete all stack resources, force delete. So delete in progress, let's look at the events. Okay, delete complete. Let's go back to stacks. All right, awesome. Nothing, clean. There you have it, a demo exercise for Carpenter. For the next video, I'm gonna do exactly the same thing, but I'm gonna be doing it using Terraform. I'll catch you next time.